In the summer of 1967, the New York Times announced that Phyllis Newman would star in a new musical called How Do You Do, I Love You, that would deal with computer dating. It would have a score by Richard Malfi Jr. and David Shire, both 29 years old at the time. The new musical would have a tryout engagement at several music fair venues out of town and open on Broadway in December. How Do You Do I Love You would have a book by Michael Stewart, who had previously written Bye Bye Birdie and Hello Dolly. Malpy and Shire were just beginning. Their musical, The Slap of Life, had a brief run off-Broadway in 1961, and Barbara Streisand had recorded their song, Autumn, which they had written while at Yale together. How Do You Do I Love You was to be their first Broadway show. Now, Phyllis Newman played Alice Francis, just an average all-American young lady being groomed to become an average all-American woman. Not a girl, not yet a woman. Um, the show started out with Alice Francis being sent by her mother from New Jersey into Manhattan. She was to get a very temporary job doing something that women did, like secretarial work, and find an all-American man to marry so that, that they could move back to the suburbs and raise 2.5 kids. Which Kevin likes to say is two kids and a midget. But I guess he decided that was too offensive to say, so I said it for you. Yeah, I didn't want to make little people jokes. <laughs> Uh, uh, in fact, Alice Francis's mother sent her to Manhattan with her wedding invitations already printed with a date and everything, so she had a deadline. The invitations had everything except the groom's name. I love that. Uh, the score included Malpy and Shire tunes that later ended up in Starting Here, Starting Now, such as One Step, Pleased With Myself, and Just Across the River. Now, the records of who auditioned for the show are in the Michael Stewart papers at the New York Public Library. Oh my god, amazing. Go read them. So we found out that auditionees included Joanne Morley, Lamont Washington, Suzanne Barry, Danny Carroll, Virginia Martin, Mary Louise Wilson, Russ Thacker. That's some audition sheets. There you go. You never know what could end up on the screen. Um, not to mention Bob Balaban, and with a note next to his name that said he was too low-key, or that he sang in a low-key, I may never know. Um, and, and, also on the audition list, uh, Baby It's You's Barry Pearl, and Truckload's James, da James Davis. I like to give those as their credits, even though they have lots of credits. Uh, on the audition sheet, it also says, uh, not on that one, but on another one, it was like lunch, and it's crossed out, and it says intermission, which I thought was just... Someone clearly did that, and everybody laughed at it. <laughs> Much like you just did right now. Um, so when Alice Francis got to New York, she landed an office job and suddenly found herself typing her exact specifications for a husband into one of those newfangled office computer things. Now, the computer shot out four different men of the 1960s, and she presented herself as the ideal woman to each one. The show's premise was ideal for skewering modern society. Uh, the show was at Turns Hilarious, at Turns Show Stopping, and also a commentary on the American family in the 1960s, what was going on between the sexes, and middle class expectations. At the time, computer dating was a very rare occurrence. A feature on Phyllis Newman in the Washington Post quoted her as saying, I didn't think that anybody did this sort of thing. Then I found out that a friend of mine tried it out and was matched up with her own cousin. It's <laughs> crazy! Uh, <laughs> was that your Phyllis Newman impression? Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, but now I'm thinking of her and like somebody's ever sleeping and like that's what she oh, was in the towel so. talking about. Uh, Kevin also likes to say he wants to see the Phyllis Newman musical called Women's Health Initiative. Which, <laughs> you know, would be awesome. <laughs> Uh, indeed, the title tune of How Do You Do I Love You predicted that one day all mating would be done by a computer. What? Match.com is being like, Look at that. we know. That's from, the, that's from the program, and it's computer and marriage. Crazy. They should do a revival of the show sponsored by like eHarmony or something. <laughs> do it. Have them do it. Yeah, eHarmony e eHarmony, are you listening? On YouTube. So in the end, because um, I know you're all curious about what happens, Alice Francis ended up with her boss, proving that machines may not know everything. The out-of-town tryout of the show received mixed notices. Many critics enjoyed the score and performances. The two main issues cited were awkward staging, since the show was done in the round, and the fact that they were confused by the thin line between satire and sincerity. Malpy and Shire opened their joint bio with the fact that they were both the sons of band leaders, Irv Shire and Richard Malpy Sr. Also getting his start on How Do You Do I Love You was an orchestrator named Jonathan Tunick, who did a fantastic job. If you ever hear the, a recording of the show, it's incredible. Um, a year later, when Burt Bacharach was looking for someone to do the orchestrations for his new musical, Promises, Promises, he asked the only person he knew in theater who he should get. Sondheim told Bacharach, get that guy who did How Do You Do I Love You, he's great. And thus, Jonathan Tunick's career began. So after the discipline, Jonathan Tunick. 
okay. <laughs> After the disappointment of How Do You Do I Love You closing out of town, Malpy and Chire also had another show, Love Match Close Out of Town. At this point, they decided it might be the best idea to go to their separate ways. Now, even though they love writing together, Malpy stayed on the East Coast to pursue directing as well as writing, and Shire moved to the West Coast to write music for films. They began having separate successes, and it looks somewhat like their days of trying for Broadway together were finished. Then in 1976, Malpy was asked to put together a review of his and Shire's songs for Manhattan Theatre Club. This review turned into Starting Here, Starting Now, which was a huge hit, garnering rave reviews and the attention of the public. In the following years, Malpy and Shire had some of their biggest successes separately. Malpy did shows like Ain't Miss Behaven and Miss Saigon, and Shire won an Academy Award for the theme song from Norma Ray. But they also worked together, and they made it to Broadway with Baby and Big. Amazing. Um, and you're all going to want to get your drinks ready, because as Franklin Shepard said, <laughs> the magic's only there when it's me and Charlie, Charlie and me. Uh, Ken Mandelbaum says, the team of Moppy and Shire have few peers in contemporary musical theater. They are among the most talented musical theater writers of the last 30 years. So if How Do You Do I Love You had come to Broadway in 1967, it may have had a shot. It would have, had, it would have opened in one of the worst Broadway seasons of all time for new musicals. In fact, the 67-68 Tony season was the only time a show won the prize for best musical after already closing. Yeah. The pickings were that slim. I Wait, I want to see if the audience knows it. Who knows what won Best Musical? Hi, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. baby. Ah, there we go. I love it. Nerds. Uh, <laughs> nerds. Uh, and yeah, we're up here. Um, so the pickings were that slim, folks. Um, and ironically, the winner that year was Hallelujah Baby, co-written by Phyllis Newman's husband, Mr. Adolph Green. A shout out to Compton and Green, indeed. Yeah. Word. Uh, so we will never know what would have happened, but I do know that I felt completely in love with the score and the entire show of How Do You Do I Love You. And I never in my wildest, fanciest dreams imagined that we'd have the honor of what's to come next.